Hi and welcome to Click Team Fusion 2.5 for beginners. We're now in part two of a project that I started a little while ago. Uh, I've taken a little bit of time to get this uh, video out, but we'll try and get them more regular now. Um, this video is going to be on the puzzle game that we started on the last video. Now we got to a point, and we'll go through it in a second, where when you click on the things that they move down, but there's not much of a game in that, it's just literally just clicking things. So we want to try and develop this into more of a competitive game, more of an interesting game to play. So the things we're looking at today are getting in that conditional logic that when you click on a, a banana or whatever, it works out if there's a banana in the uh, next space and the next space after that. The point of the game is to get as many bananas on one click as you can to try and get as many items of the same nature that are next to each other. So we need a way of it knowing how many there are next to each other, which is not easy to do. And we need a way of destroying all the ones that are adjacent to the one you click. We also need to create feedback. Now this is uh, something that amateur games creators always tr forget to do. When someone makes an action, they want to see a response. Now, Apple are fantastic at doing this with their phones. Every time you click on the iPhone, there's instantly a response back. And actually, there's something called haptic feedback, which actually gives you a bit of a vibration when you've when you've created a, a touch with some devices. Not Apple yet, but who knows? It probably is coming soon. And we want to probably to keep score because people are competitive. They want to know how well they're doing. And the way you do that is you have a score. We want to be able to get the score when you click on it and maybe a score comes up straight away like in many of these games and a big score at the side so you can keep score of how well you've done so far, not just for that move. Um, I doubt we'll get through much of this day. If we get through the first one, then I'll be very happy because that's not easy to do. Um, but I will go through it quite slowly. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. So let's close that down and let's start up the same project. And this is exactly the same project that we started on um, part one. And if I run it, you can see that if you click on them, they disappear. Now, if you haven't seen that video, just go back quickly now, have a look at it, work for it, and then come back to this video. If you have seen it, fantastic. All right, let's move on. So what's happening is it's first of all creating this grid in a group called init, which is short for initialize or initializer. Um, and it creates this grid of randomized fruit. I think it's supposed to be, who knows? I don't know what I'm thinking. There's bananas and there's apples. I don't know what the green squares are, but whatever. Um, and then when you click on an item it knows that that item's gone and it pushes these ones down and then creates another one up here okay so let's have a look so if i get rid of that and they all slide down now that's actually a bit of a mental illusion because it's not actually these ones aren't going down this one's changing to green moving up here and then coming down okay so it's just an illusion that they're moving down really uh, because of the way we've coded it, we've jumped them up and then they, they've come down again. Um, so, the way we've done this is actives in um, Click to Infusion are incredibly powerful, but they're not great at remembering data. They're not fantastic data things because each item, each active is very uh, individual and they don't work as a group. So to help us understand it as a group, we've saved all of the um, states of the actives, all the directions, in an array. And arrays are fantastic for grouping data. So if you've got a, a game that you're trying to make and it involves gr grouping data together, arrays are fantastic. Um, so that's why we've used arrays. And actually, we've not used them to their full power uh, for this project, but they've, they've been pretty useful so far. Okay, so what I want to do is create, so have a look at this, there's a whole load of greens here. I want to get a situation where I click on one of them and all of these go. So it needs to work out that one, two, three, four, five, five greens are attached to this one. Now, it seems quite easy for me and you 
to look at that and go, well, you can just see that they're next to each other. But this is a computer we're dealing with, and computers don't see things. They just follow commands, they follow instructions. So what I'm thinking of doing, and as you know, as I've said throughout all of this, I don't do any planning for this. I, I work with you guys as you're probably trying to figure out how you do it. And that's the state I'm in. So this is me trying to figure out how we're going to do this. Um, I would imagine, so if I click on this one, to be able to work out that there's ones next to it, it's going to have to look at the states of all the ones next to it. And it will notice that these, this one here and this one here are not green. They're not green squares. So it doesn't have to worry about them. They'll stay as they are. But this one here is green and this one here is green. So it needs to worry about those two. It then looks at this one. Now it doesn't need to look back to the left but it does need to look up, right and down to see if there are greens there. Well, up there's not a green, right there's not a green, but there's a green at the bottom, so it needs to worry about this one. Then back to this one, it needs to do the same thing, up, left, and technically it doesn't need to look right because this one looked up, which is the same piece, so it needs to look left and it finds out that there's one there. Then this one, it needs to look up, down and left, Okay, and again, didn't have to look left because we've already checked left off this one. So it didn't need to look down because we've already looked left of this one. But it needs to check the up and left, definitely. And it knows there's one up. This one here, it needs to look up, left and right. And this one down here, it needs to look right and down. So you can already see that this is getting really complicated. And sometimes with programming, it's better to take a step back and think right what's the most logical way I can do this sometimes the easiest way is not the best way but the easiest way will work so why not use the easiest way let's think about this logically what's the worst case scenario for this for this computer the worst case scenario would be a situation where these are green down the bottom row then we go up here, and then these are green down this row. Then we go up here, and these are green down this row. So it's like a snake going through it. That's, that's the worst case scenario for this. The reason that's the worst case scenario is if I created a program that, that checked all of these, that would be the one. It would take the longest, I, the, logically speaking, it would take the longest to figure out because each time it cycles through checking there's another one, another green just one green to check again and then there's another green to check again and as it snakes around it's constantly having to check again, check again, check again so that's the worst case scenario and how many checks would that make? Well, the one down here uh, that is the one we click on in the, this worst case scenario because if it's not for this worst case scenario if it starts in the middle of the snake then it halves the time. So the worst case scenario is clicking on this bottom one and it's all of the snakes. So well, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six at the bottom row. And for, for simplicity, we'll call it six. I know it's five because we've clicked on that one and it already knows about them. We'll call it six. And how many rows are there? Six. So one, two, three, four, five. Five rows. So five times six is what? 30? I hope. <laughs> Then these ones here that connect the snake up, so 30, 31, uh, 32, 33, 34, 35. So the maximum amount of checks it's going to have to do is 35 checks. Now you might think, well hang on, surely 35 checks, surely with a snake, if it was just purely covered with green squares, wouldn't that be harder? Well, it wouldn't be harder because if I click on that one it would instantly check these two and find out they're both green but on the next round of checks which we're going to talk about in a second but the next round of checks it would be checking this one and this one it would be connect checking the connections between both of these so it's it's sort of on each cycle of checks it's sprouting out in two different directions maybe three directions maybe four if it was all green it would actually cover the the whole thing in less than uh, 36 I think I said whoops I've forgotten to remember how many it is so it's one two three four five 
uh, I think it's 35. 35 or 36. Let's do 36. Let's do 40 to be sure safe. Okay. So now we know how many cycles the, the worst case scenario would be. And with these things, always try and think, what's the worst case scenario? Some people potentially, and you know, this is a very specialized case, but might go, oh, well, that'll work for most users. But what if your game or application takes off and it becomes a worldwide phenomenon? You're then happy with what 5% of your users or 5% of the games just not working. If you're a games publisher, games developer, a professional games developer, then that's not good enough. You, you need to be very, very sure that almost every single person will have a good experience. And if they don't have a good experience, then there's very specialized reasons why not. Okay, so <laughs> I'm stalling for time because I'm trying to figure out how we we'll do this. Okay, so I the player makes a click and we need to check, we need to have some sort of way of checking what's next to the click, what's next to the one that we know. So I'm thinking of having a second array, like a checking array, to figure this out. So on my secondary array, it would feed in. Uh, maybe I could use the same array. Maybe I could use a different Z index on the same array, but it would feed in whether it's being connected, whether it's connected to the click or not. And it will cycle through it 35 times. Let's just double check that. So it's 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Yeah, so 35 cycles. So it would check through 35 times what's next to the ones that it knows about. So it would check all the ones it knows about, uh, like the ones above and to the left and to the right and to the bottom, where appropriate. I'm thinking. <laughs> he says tentative, tentatively um, okay let's try that and see how that goes because I've never ever created this type of game before I've created games ish similar to it but we'll, we'll give it a go and with the beauty of Clicks Infusion is you don't have to worry about writing huge amount of code if you get it wrong because it's so it's so simple it's prototyping you can prototype it on this, and actually I, I do that with a lot of games and applications. I try it out on this, and tr you do um, what works well, and uh, next to what, and the colour schemes, and everything else. I can just play around with it by just clicking and dragging them. And then I would go to a computing language, uh, whether it's a JavaScript or whatever, and create the thing by code, and that's it makes it so much easier. Okay, so let's close that down. Now, my program, the programming bit's going to start here, where it says destroy the tile. We actually want a heck of a lot to happen before it destroys that tile. And in fact, we don't only want it to destroy that tile, but we want it to destroy all the tiles around it. So we're going to have an awful lot of stuff happening before it destroys that tile. So I'm going to probably move all of this down so I'm going to include uh, I'm going to insert another event there and I'm going to call it and I'm going to put a loop in and I'm thinking of calling it uh, my destroy a cycle and again I'm going to copy that so I now I'll need to call that loop. Okay, and I'm going to just move the destroy cycle down to there. And what I'm going to do is click and drag this and copy it. Right click and just change the name of this. I'm going to call that destroy cycle. And we'll do one loop. And sometimes you, it's easier to just have one loop so that when you click on it, it just starts that one loop and then I can do all the wonderful stuff from this loop. So I don't I don't want the destroyed tile to be called yet, but I'm, what I'm going to do is just copy that because I will need to play around with the destroy tile loop and I'm just going to delete it from this line just to give me some, some space to work in. Okay, so what I need to do first is do some sort of loop uh, that checks all the adjacent tiles to the one I've clicked. 
So probably what I want to do, let's have a look at what Z index. I don't think I've used the Z at all. I've put all the Z at zero, but I knew I needed to have a Z, which is why if you look in the array, um, when I've created them, I've made sure that I've done the X, Y, and Z. And Z I use, uh, especially when I've used the X and the Y for X and Y coordinates, I use Z to store extra information, extra stuff on it. And uh, you can store as much stuff as you want. I mean, the Z index, you, you theoretically, can go on forever. I'm sure there'll be a comment going, oh, no, actually, it does have a limit, but anyway. Uh, and the X and the Y, I want to go on forever, but to describe uh, direction. Um, okay, so... Uh, right, so on loops, uh, okay, so I need to store where where that is first uh, in my array. So I know where they've clicked, and I'm going to write that, uh, so I'm going to write that, I'm going to write the value to x, y, z, and I'm going to store that, so the values... So I want uh, uh wrong way around. I want to store a one at that z point to say yes, that is uh, that's been clicked. Okay. Now the x is the position that the player clicked because that's the one that's the one piece that I know. I need to destroy. That's the one piece I know that is the same colour as itself. Um, I need to store. Uh, all right, I need to do the Y and the Z index. Uh, I can call that one. Z index. Let's store it all in Z index as, as one. Uh, yeah. Because all of the um, positions are stored in Z index of zero, so their X and Y positions are stored in where the Z index is zero, uh, and I want it to store that one where Z index is one. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Try and get this in my head. Okay, so with this, uh, all of their position date, uh, sorry, the direction of which the active is pointing is stored where the Z index is zero. So I don't want to interfere with that. I don't want to touch that. So Z index zero, I don't want to touch because that's that's really good information that tells me which directions they're in. But something I do want to touch is where z index is 1 and I'm just making these numbers up 0 comes after 1 now when z index is 1 it doesn't have any data attached to there at the moment uh, so what I want to do is say use that where z index is 1 to store all the information that I'm about to do on this cycle to see which ones are the same as the one the user clicked okay nice and simple really easy right okay so I've stored it where z index is 1 and I'm going to be using well, I'm going to be using where Z index is one through all of the the tutorial for today. Um, so that's the one I know is the same as the one I've clicked on. Something I don't know at the moment is the direction of the one that's been clicked. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on oh, click on store, which is I'm using to store all the data, and I'm going to click on new double click and I'm going to say clicked or oh, clicked tile direction okay and I'm going to go back to the uh, event editor and I'm going to store that so not only do I want the directions of it but I also want the direction of it so the position of it I also want the direction of it okay so set tile direction and I'm going to right click on the tile and it because I've because it's on the event where I've clicked it it knows which tile I'm talking about and I want the direction so where uh, current direction value done okay 
All right, so if I run this, and I can double check that that's working, the way you do that is, um, is add the object. What's it called? Store, isn't it? Yeah. Add the object to there. I want to look at the alterable values, and I want to click on one. So I click on the green, and it says that that is a direction one. I want to click on the red, and it says that's a direction one. Ooh. Banana is direction two, and green is direction zero. Apparently. Okay, and let's double check that. I think what's happening, if I double click this, I think what's happening is it's starting the loop. So I don't want it to start the loop, I want it to write those values, I want it to do all of this before it does any of the loop. Okay, let's try that now. This is why you should always check your stuff. So all triple values, so check tar direction, so there should be different numbers depending on what I click. So I click on green and I get a 2, I click on the banana and I get a 1, and I click on a red and I get a 0. That that seems more likely. And this is why this thing here, this little window here, is so valuable. It tells you exactly what it thinks that the numbers are, and if it's not what you're expecting, like I've just done there, and I didn't do that deliberately to show you this, I just genuinely made a mistake of the order of uh, the actions I've made. And you can absolutely check that your code is good. And just talking about checking, it is critical that you check things as you go along, otherwise you will make mistakes. Uh, I mean, when I'm, I'm creating a website at the moment, which is a really, really complicated, multifaceted website with databases and everything else, that I literally check every step I make, every function I write, everything I do, I will then run the code and run the website in this instance or play the game and check that things are working every step of the way. It's easy to make mistakes. I mean, uh, I've been doing this for a while and I'm constantly making mistakes. All right, so it's very hard at a later point to find the mistake out if you haven't checked it regularly enough um, because you, when you've just made a change and it's not working, you know that that change is you know, responsible for it. But if you do a day's worth of coding or a day's worth of work on ClickTeam Fusion 2.5 and then you try and run it, uh, then it's any action, if it doesn't work, it's any action you made that day. Who knows? Who knows? Okay. All right, that's point over. Uh, okay, let's move on. All right, so uh, I've clicked on it and it's remembered the tar direction, the one I've clicked, and to the Z index of one, it's written a value, and this is just an arbitrary value, I've just said one, uh, because naturally there'd be zero um, otherwise, so I've just changed, I've just made it one, because it's, it's interesting. Okay, so um, for the destroy cycle, I wanted to do the cycles of checking, uh, so I want to start a loop, and I'm probably missing a few steps here, but let's just let's just keep going. Uh, so I'm going to call this my check uh, check same loop uh, check same tiles. I don't know. The, this this naming convention is not great, but again, the camel case, lowercase first word, uppercase the other ones. It's just so much easier to stay to keep it the same. We'll copy that. Now I calculated that it would be a maximum of 35, I think it would be 34 because I think I counted the one I clicked on, but 35 fine, you can put it as 40 or whatever, um, but 35 is maximum so okay. And again I'm going to insert uh, a new event, I'm going to right click and on loop and I've pasted what the loop's called and don't try and copy it by hand because you will make typos, just literally paste it in, copy and paste it because then you won't make typos. Okay, so I've got to be thinking, right, okay, so it's firing before it does any of the destroying, it's going to check them. It's already made one that it knows, but it needs to check if there's any others. So what is it checking? Well, it's probably going to find that one that it definitely knows is um, is a green square or whatever, 
and it needs to check up, down, left, right from that point. And we're ignoring the fact that it could be on the right bottom right hand corner, so we wouldn't need to check the right and down, and we can worry about that in a second. But it needs to check those directions. So I'm probably going to need more than one of these guys. So I've just clicked there, Control and C and Control and V to paste them. And I'm thinking that's going to be up, down, left, right, and it's going to check them. Um, I'm also thinking that this is only relevant, this only needs to fire if we're currently on um, a desired square, desired tile. I'm also thinking that I need to create a nested loop, which we discussed last time, to cycle through the X and the Y. So actually, I'm not going to copy that. Uh, I'm just going to copy it one. Uh, I'm just going to fire off. So this is 35 times, but we need to check the X's and the Y's so that we're cycling through. Like we created the tiles, we need to cycle through in the same way. Uh, so start loop, and I'm just going to use the same naming convention for simplicity. I do this a lot, and it's not in my thing because I copy and pasted the rows. And I'm just going to put an X at the end of it to say, right, this this is the X coordinates. I believe there are six. And I'm just going to copy and paste that in again, just to save me some time. I knew it was just an X at the end of it. Uh, so it starts that six times. I'm trying to remember how much. Oh, it's ten. Okay. And I'm going to do the same with the Y. So I'm cycling through these. So Y, and we're going to do that ten times because we know there's ten rows going down the right. And so this enables us to have to have a, a cycling effect where it's checking all of the tiles. Okay, so at this point here, we know which tile it's talking about, which tile it's currently on. We also know at least one tile which is um, of a colour, and we know the colour that we're looking for. Okay, so this one is the one we probably want four times because we need to check above the one that we know already, bot uh, beneath it, to the left of it, to the right of it. But we also, we need to have a point in here where we're actually looking to see whether the one we're interested in is the current one that we are looking at. Because if the one that we're cycling through isn't one that we know about, we don't want to do anything. So what I want to do is insert and I'm going to do, so I do a general, uh, I can do a general comparison. And I want to know the current, so fast, uh, fast loop, the current loop index. And again, I haven't copied it, so I have to write it in. And I'll be very careful. Check same tile. And the check same site tiles x. And there's so many times. Basically, if you type these in wrong, if you spell something wrong, uh, Click Team Fusion won't let you know. Um, there's nothing in there that says, "Oh, by the way, you probably meant to say check same tile X rather than check same tiles X." Computers don't work like that. They they don't let you know. Uh, some some IDEs um, do, but anyway, we won't go into that. Okay, so uh, I want to check the current X is equal. Uh, do, I, do I want to know that? I want to know that the current one they're looking at is the one that we know about in there. Um, so I'm going to copy, I'm going to cut that, control and X, and actually I'm more interested in knowing what's in here. And I'm interested in the Z index because that's, uh, so we, we want one there because that's, that's where we've stored all the current data. And I'm interested in the x coordinate and the y coordinate for the current one. So for the one we're currently looking at, which is same tile x and same tile y in the loop, the, we want this to be equal to one because then that makes it interesting. That makes that means that the one we're currently looking at is one we already know about and we need to check whether the ones next to it, left to it, right of it, 
are above it and below it are uh, also the same color. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's so on. So we're interested in that. Um, we also need to check whether the one above it is it is the same color. So let's put another check to general values and uh, this time in fact I should just copy and paste that so what I'm going to do is drag that into the 13 to copy and paste it or you can just press click on that and control and C and control V uh, it does the same thing and because I know it's going to be similar I'm just going to copy and paste this and just adapt this so um, what am I going for first I'm going to check the one um, I don't know above it um, now, as we discussed last time, y starts at zero at the top and goes higher the further down you go. So when I'm talking about checking one above it, I want to minus one. And I'm interested in the direction of it, and the directions are stored in the z index. So I'm going to take that, uh, sorry, in the z index equal to zero. So I'm going to change that to zero because that's the bit we're interested in. Um, and it's not going to equal 1, it's going to be equal, it's going to be the same as the direction that of the one that the person clicked, which is stored in our store. So check for tile direction. That tells us the current tile direction of which the person clicked, so whether it was a green square or a red circle or whatever. Okay, and it has to be equal to it. So if the person clicked on a direction 1, and the one above the one we already know is a direction one, uh, then we're interested in it. Then we want to do something. Okay, so let's click OK. I'm going to double click that because I, I know that I'll need the uh, name of the, the uh, loop, so I'm going to copy that. And the thing we want to do is basically uh, do the same as we did here, write a value of one into the, into the Z index one array. So we know that that one is going to have to change. So what we did is we're going to write the value one because that's what we've used uh, to say yes this one is one we're we're interested in destroying. Click OK. Uh, the x index is the same as before. Loop index and I'm just going to paste it in and we need the uh, speech marks. OK the y index is slightly different because we're not we already know the current one that it's looping at we already know that that is uh, that is um, a one already we were looking to see whether the one above it is and we found out that it is if this fires off and so we want to change that one to one and the z index we're using is one all right, so that seems pretty complicated. So now, now I'm going to delete these because I'm just going to copy and paste this, and I'm going to click on it and copy, and paste, paste, paste. And all I'm going to do with these, and there, there are probably, there are easier ways of doing this, but I'm I think this is the sorry there are more efficient ways of doing this, but this is the way I'm going to do it so that it's nice and obvious. That one was above, and in fact, what I can do is insert a comment. I'm going to say check above the known uh, check above. Okay, I'd probably be more descriptive if I was doing this properly. And I'm going to copy that and paste that in here so it goes above. And this time we're going to check below so that we know what we're doing. And I normally check above and below because it's just a matter of changing the plus here. In, so a minus here into a plus which as you add to the y it goes down because obviously the zero starts at the top right click here edit uh, having said that I'm not quite sure uh, the array zero starts at the top I assume it does right plus <laughs> uh, okay and that's checked below and then these ones aren't much more difficult these ones are just check right and check left so check right first. Oh, yeah, I forgot return. Uh, actually, makes a return. So, uh, and this time we we're not going to change the y. Mm, stop. I'm not paying attention at the moment. 
uh, I'm going to change the X and right is obviously plus like it is maths uh, everyday maths but edit and this time I'm going to check the right so I'm adding one to there oh this one I'm going to change the right I'm going to delete that okay and then finally we're going to check uh, copy that paste that in there go check left check left and again I press return didn't mean to right check left and for this one uh, I want to get rid of that and left is minus left is to the left right click here and OK and then minus one there and then we want to get rid of that because we want it on the same ah check tile X ah oh, what a numpty I'm sure some of you are screaming into your computer monitor that I've made a mistake there. <laughs> Easily done when you're copying and pasting these things. Easily done. I wonder if that's on every single sodding one of them, uh, including the ones on the left hand side as well. What an upty. This does prove that I'm doing this as I go along. Some people, when they do tutorials, have uh, like the finished product. On this on the side of them and they're just referring to it they're just reading it out this isn't this is live right okay so we've created a process that is looping through all of the the um, uh, tiles and looking for ones next to ones that we know are the same color as the one you should have clicked on nice and simple really easy not um, so the array for the Z index one now is holding that information it knows, that array knows where all of the, the ones are that we want to get rid of. I think it's going to be sensible now to check that it's correct. So what I'm going to do is have an array that just deletes them. And it's not what I want yet. I don't, it's not what I want in the final product because actually we want them, we wanted to do it one by one so that we can get the nice animation or, or whatever. Um, so let's have a look at how we do this. Okay, so I'm going to create uh, another loop here, and this is just going to be a, a temp delete loop. So we'll say uh, temp, because uh, do I want to say temp? Might I use this in the final one? Uh, I think I will. Okay, so um, delete, Ooh, delete, fantastic spelling, uh, delete current tile whatever okay and I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to do it once because I'll do the X and the Y as I've done before so we're going to insert uh, another event let's say on loop copy that uh, there and then we want to do it again a couple of times with X and Y so going to do it with the X And we're going to do it, what, six times for the X. And then we're going to do it with the Y. And what was it, ten times, I think it was, from memory. And we're going to do it ten times. Okay, and then we're going to put that in there. So that's going to be Y. Okay, and what I want to do now is just delete um, the one that it... Is talking about so I mean I could have done it in this loop but I'd rather complete the array and then start deleting them so if I drag this in here I can reuse this one um, so I need to change the name of it so let's copy the name uh, in fact let's copy the one without the X and I just need to change the names and the beauty of having it all one word is that I can just double click it to highlight the lot and I'm just going to paste that in and I'm just going to copy that, paste it in there, and I need to just add the X and the Y, and I don't want uh, anything else. Right, so this says, right, okay, the one I'm talking about is uh, the current one with the loop index of that and the Y index of that. So it cycles through all of the numbers in the array. And I also want to say, right, okay, the active that that is the same as that so that's saying equals to one uh, and so I want to say right okay if you're the same as that 
if you, what was it? Uh, I think I used X and Y. I hope I did. If you've got the same X uh, value, let's put X. Oh. Ah. App music control, there we go. If you've got the same X value as that, and the same Y value as that, and the array is saying that you should be deleted because it's equal to 1 in the Z1 array then I want you to be destroyed so moment of truth and I'm just gonna uh, save this so run application wow okay so let's pick an easy one two greens here so when I click on this uh, it probably will muck up because it will probably move down but it should destroy both of these and it's sort of there-ish so let's have a look um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bit out because I don't want this to continue because I think this is interfering with it so what I can do is I can say activate inactivate line I want to inactivate it I don't want that to fire off all of this stuff here so I've deactivated it it does it say inactivate inactive deactivate right anyway so let's run that now, let's run that again. So I want to pick a small one, uh, of which there's not many. Ah, the two reds there. So that destroys both of those. Let's have a look at these bananas here, let's see if it works for these. And it does. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm so happy. Bananas here, does, and the greens here. So there's quite a lot of greens here. Okay, and you can see it deleted one over there. So there's a problem with our code a little bit there. And I know exactly what the problem is. Uh, let's try the reds here. And it deletes all of them. So there is a problem with this code. Uh, now it's just deleting everything. So let's have a look again what the problem was. So the greens here, it's happy with. It's absolutely fine with that. Uh, and I know what the problem is. <laughs> and so this is why testing is such a critical part of this. What's happening is we're doing everything correct. It'll always work absolutely fine on the first go. But then on the second go, we haven't reset the array. The array is still holding the values it was before. And that's causing problems. So we need to get we need to wipe the z equals 1 array out completely. We need to just get rid of everything, reset everything to zero. So, uh, <laughs> the way of doing that is at the end of all of this, when everything's said and done, we need to get rid of it. So we've got our destroy cycle. So our destroy cycle is going to be our main loop that's going to dictate what's happening so I'm gonna go right to the bottom here and say right before you finish off I want you to do all of this stuff uh, and I'm just gonna copy this because I'm just gonna change it slightly and there's probably easier ways of doing this but whatever um, and what are we gonna call this one uh, so we call it uh, reset Z one array Okay, reset, reset it. Click OK. Uh, we're going to do one loop for now. And going to just do the same as we've done before. Going to loop the same way. And I don't like all these loops personally. But at the moment, it's much easier for us to do it this way. And there are other ways that you can reset this array, but for me, this is by far the easiest at this point. And what I want to do, I want to do is cycle through and get rid of all this. Okay, I've just copied and pasted these just to make it quicker. Just check all this; that all looks fine. And all I want to do is just delete the current um, current theme. So. I'm just going to go through this array, the z equals 1 array, and I'm just going to put everything to 0. Uh, so, fast loop. Oh, 
I'm doing very well with this keyboard, right? And that's X and loop index. I probably should have copied and pasted the last one, but anyway. And that's Y. And it's the Z equals one array. So that now, after everything's done there, it will just go through that array and delete the lot. So let's see if that works now. So the first one always worked. That was fine. Now all of these now, the Z index has gone back. Z equals one index has gone back to zero. Okay, so they're now the whole thing's reset. So when I click these ones, it's just those ones. Brilliant. These ones, these ones should be all of these. But we don't do diagonals. We could program it to do diagonals, but we don't for this. And that works perfectly, and it's working as expected. This one is on its own, so it's just that one that goes. These uh, four are together, and they four go. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> okay, it is a huge relief that that's actually worked. And I'm a little bit shocked that that's worked so easily. Um, right, the next thing we've got to do is find a way to get this beautiful sliding thing. Okay, it d doesn't look very nice at the moment, and actually, I got to the end of the game very quickly because they're not replenishing the tiles. Now the problem with this is the way we've programmed it is perfect for one tile, but it's not so perfect for a whole load of tiles. Loads of ways we can do this. Um, I, I want us. I want you to consider something. If I load this up, and let's pick a good one, um, this one here. There's four there. Okay, so you can see that there's four there. The problem with me clicking on this one is the way we programmed it is this one shifts up to here when when this one gets destroyed. But I'm destroying two in that row. Oh, sorry, in that column. I'm destroying two, these two here. So I need it to shift up, not once, but I need it to shift up twice. And then it's going to have to fall down extra distance. So if I show you that in the code, how we did that, uh, where are we? I did it in ultra value A. Uh, so I think it's yeah. Set ultra value A to 48. I think 48 is the size of the tile. That's where I got that from. Yeah, 48. So you can see at this point here, what it's doing is it's just shifting that tile up one space. But now we need it to be a bit smarter than that. And we need it to sometimes shift it up two, or three, or four, or five, depending on how many tiles have been destroyed in that instance. Not so easy. And I'm starting to think now, hmm, maybe I programmed that probably not the best way on the last one. It worked when there was only one tile being destroyed. I worry it's not going to work this time. Now, one thing I'm wondering is instead of setting it, at 48, I'm wondering whether I can just add 48 to it, so that if it happens twice, if there's two tiles missing, if there's more than one cycle, whether it just keeps adding it on. But again, I don't see that working because it's only going to fire once because that tile got destroyed. Um, so yeah, this is this is going to get me thinking now of how I'm going to actually accomplish this. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. So, let's go through, uh, and I d I'll do this. I mean, I'll do this for um, any problem I have. I just go through the code and just think, right, what's it doing? So, it's destroying tile once, which is old fashioned because we want to destroy a lot more times, and it's updating just that col just that um, column. Because last time we had it, it was only going to affect one column because there was only one thing being destroyed. But this time, it's going to affect a lot more columns than that. So, if I try and see what happens, if I fire this off for each of these ones here, and I'm just interested to see what happens. So, this one, this um, uh, row here, is going to fire off every time there's a tile that we want to destroy. Now, I think this feeds off, there we go, if I show you here, this feeds off the clicked tile X and the clicked tile Y, I would imagine, or clicked tile X and clicked tile 
X there. I'm not quite sure why that's the click tile X. Oh, I see. Okay, that's click tile X, and then that's the loop because that loop is going through all the possible Y values. Okay, it's firing off ten times to reflect the ten different um, items in that column. Um, so, hmm. Okay, so all I need to affect. Let's have a look. Only thing I need to update is the click tile X by the looks of it. Okay, so if I set here artificially set the clicked value X and it's no longer talking about the clicked value of X, it's just talking about the the X value of the tile we're trying to delete. Let's see what happens. So um, that one's going to be the loop index and then we have to type this in again which doesn't end well but didn't earlier delete current tile x and we'll copy that because I'm going to update the delete tile y as well and this is just really for me to see whether this works because if this works this is going to save me a lot of time and then maybe later on I can see whether there's a better way of doing it. And the problem is it will fire that loop before this gets updated. So I double click on that, move the loop to the bottom. I actually don't want to destroy that because I think the uh, we don't actually want them to destroy. We want them to move up. So let's have a look and see whether this makes any difference. Moment of truth. So I'm going to pick this one here because there's a nice, there's two there and then there's that entire sort of three columns there. Now I couldn't actually see whether that worked. It looked like it did. Um, but I, I don't know if it was... Yeah, that seems to jump a lot. That one works fine. Uh, let's pick this one. It seemed to be changing it do seem to be changing and it's deleting a lot more it's changing yeah <laughs> it doesn't seem to work as expected and I think I know what's going on I think what I'm gonna do is instead of setting 48 I'm gonna add 48 so add 48 to A let's see if that makes any difference who knows sort of ish working isn't it sort of half working um, but it's difficult to tell so if I click that there should just be bananas and two reds there those two reds should filter down to there hmm I, I, could, I lost track there <laughs> if I click on that there should be a banana green green banana banana green green banana if I click on that there should be banana and then three greens and a banana so it looks like it's sort of working but there seems to be a few that disappear that I don't want to disappear and I wonder if I've mucked up a little bit here It's <laughs> very difficult to see whether it's working. Uh, sort of looks like it is. But there's a jump in them. They sort of shoot down. So that's that's not a desired effect. So if I click on that one, I don't want this tile here to move here. I want it to move here. And I want this tile to move up too as well. So I think... Um, we need to rethink how we're going to do this engine. That doesn't seem to to work nicely. Um, it seems to almost work. Um, I think I've come to the end of what I wanted to do. The main thing I wanted to do is calculate what needs to be destroyed, and we've done that. And we've almost got to a situation where they move down nicely, but it doesn't quite work. It looks a bit clunky. So I think what's best uh, is I spend another video 
going through how we're going to fix that, how we're going to make it look nice. What I'll probably do is rethink the way that I'm going to um, shift them up. What I'll probably do is calculate, right, okay, how much are these going to have to shift up using the array? Uh, but again, no, no preparation in these videos. So who knows? Who knows what I'm going to do? Um, if you have noticed that this bar here has uh, miraculously disappeared, uh, I realised that that bar was there way too late into making this video and I didn't want to go back and do the whole thing again. Uh, so I apologise for this bar making a guest appearance uh, in this video. Um, if you have enjoyed this video and you want more, uh, then click like or subscribe. Uh, thank you to everyone for all your comments. They are very, very kind and very, very helpful. Um, I've already got ideas for other videos that you guys want me to make. Uh, in fact, there's some very, very good suggestions for videos uh, actually or of games and applications that, that I've never made before, like this one. Never made before, so it's interesting for me to do. Um, and I hope, I hope you've learned uh, a lot through this. I mean, there's the, this is quite high level stuff. So if you're new to Click to Infusion and you're realizing how to do this, then, you know, fantastic. It's, uh, it's taken me a long time to get to the point of figuring out arrays and figuring out that the, the actives are there, but the data is there and you've got to find some way of communicating the two. It's not easy. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much.